we get a lot of questions say, you know, what should we do in the winter? How are we going to train? You know, what's the best way to, should we buy a trainer? Should we buy a compu trainer or whatever? So for those of, most of you know me, but I'm Ross Hart. I own this uh, Hart Cycle. We've been in business since 1988. When it comes to, 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 to fitness and training and staying healthy and um, less injuries, it starts with a good fit. And that, so that's basically, you know, what, what we've been doing for the last couple of years here, and this has been working out real well. This is the only machine on the market that is what we call a dynamic fit machine versus a static fit. Most of you have had static fits done where, you know, you have your bike put in a trainer and somebody looks at you and sort of measures you and makes you stop pedaling and changes this or changes that and you start pedaling again. Um, or you may have had something that Retool does, which is a motion capture. Um, this is um, this allows me to move the individual up, down, fore and aft in the saddle, up, down, fore and aft in the handlebar position, and it's a communication between you and myself as far as what feels good and what's comfortable for you. And then it gives me a set of parameters, an X and Y position on your bike that we can then set your bike up. And then you go out and ride and come back, and we can tweak it and do all those things. Uh, Chris owns um, DTN Draper Training and Nutrition. Uh, Chris is a at the top of his field as far as uh, triathlons, as far as training, as far as nutrition. I mean, I've been around him enough, enough to know and listen to what he has to say. It's, it's really, really informative. He's a four-time um, Ultraman, which is by invitation only in Kona, Hawaii. He has placed in the top ten every single event in Kona. And um, so Chris is going to be my, the next speaker coming up. Um, and before that, I just want to let you know the second speaker will be Tom Bartolino, and Tom owns Hopewell Physical Therapy. Tom, uh, University of Penn grad, um, uh, Emory uh, grad also, and um, Tom is going to talk to us a little bit about dry needling tonight. So um, let me give the floor over to Chris. You know, as Rock shared, I have a little bit of a background in, you know, triathlon, as well as, you know, that's pretty much, you know, my business. Um, endurance, you know, sports, as well as nutrition. When Ross invited me here, he said, you know, what can you do, you know, for the audience? Well, I want to kind of explain, you know, potentially what you can do in an off-season going into an actual season. So let me kind of introduce, you know, what I'm going to talk about. It's called periodization. Okay, periodization is just a plan. It's a fancy scientific word, you know, for a plan. If you're just a cyclist and you had a key event you want to do for just new cycling, we would sit there and you know basically you know analyze your power, your heart rate, you know your form on the bicycle, and we would establish you know numbers. Is it going to be watts? Is it going to be heart rate? You know that we're doing perceived exertion. So what we're looking at you know strengths and we're looking at weaknesses. I'm going to kind of keep it skewed for the bike you know here tonight. And if there's something that's beyond my control, you know I'll you know send you over here. They've got the fantastic you know fit machine here, so they'll narrow you down into a position that's going to you know work best you know for the numbers that I'm going to uh, put out there you know, for you. If he tells me how fast he wants to go on a bike, I can tell him exactly how much he needs to weigh, what kind of, you know, power he needs to produce, and we can modify nutrition, X, Y, Z, you know, there in the beginning, in that off-season, you know, phase, going into, you know, the next phase, which would be a base, you know, to potentially, you know, get there. What's behind the curtain? They're not riding compacts. They're not riding a 50, you know, 34. Um, a lot of the times, you know, you'll see it in the magazines, you'll see you know, XYZ, you know, exhibiting, hey, you need to get a compact there. Well, if you're going to get fast on a bicycle, okay, you're not going to, you're not going to ride a compact there. You want to go with a standard in terms of a try, you know, uh, 53, uh, you know, uh, 39, or, you know, some of my bigger guys like Ross DiMaggio, we're riding pie plates, we're riding like 54, 55s, um, you know, to, and we're putting out some serious, you know, wattages. Um, another thing you want to do is you don't want to jack your heart rate up, you know, in the off season. Okay, so when you're training and you're going, you know, high heart rate and you're sitting up there around, uh, you know, uh, 85, 90%, you're like a zone three, zone four for my watts people, um, you're going to burn a ton of carbohydrates. You're going to probably be fat and, you know, hungry all the time. You're going you're gonna to burn them. You're going to eat them. You're going to burn them. You're going to eat them. Why? Because what's happening there is your heart rate's just going too high and you, you need oxygen to, you know, burn, you know, uh, fat and you're bypassing that system and you just keep burning carbs, you're burning carbs, you're burning carbs. And then my athletes that are typically, you know, working out all the time but they're not dropping any weight. Um, drop it back, 
um, to a little bit lower intensity, you know, during your off season. You know, that will help out, you know, a ton. Uh, what does big ring work do? Number one, it makes you stronger, but number two, it sits there and, you know, will cap, you know, what your heart rate, you know, does. So that's part of the reason why you do all of those like 15%, you know, grades in that class and the 20% grades. Um, a lot of big ring, you know, work, you know, will not jack the heart rate up because you can't go fast enough with your cadence, but you can get stronger and it will kind of, it'll kind of hold out there. Yeah, yeah. One, yeah. Well, that, one race you're really trying yeah, to beat for. And, that, and that, that's a good question. You know, that's it. In this case here, I was just building up yep. to uh, Eagle Man. I get people that want to do Eagle Man in June, and then they want to do a, uh, I got a lot of people that want to do Ironman Louisville. They're killing me with this because they move Ironman Louisville to October. Uh, building strength in the off season and going to bigger gear. Mm -hmm. um, are you keeping your cadence up too? I'm a physical therapist, have an office here in town practicing for a number of years and so I see a lot of athletes I see a lot of people that aren't athletes too but uh, it's uh, nice to talk to a population of people who are interested in staying fit and doing more and more um, I obviously come at uh, fitness from the perspective of people getting injured people get injured and end up in my office and I kind of have to figure out why they're injured and what we have to do to get them back riding cycling um, swimming running all, all that sort of thing when we're working on strength and flexibility, generally speaking, there's some common pitfalls. And one of those, the major pitfall, is the development of a muscle imbalance. Chris alluded to this. Joints, or muscles, attach to joints. And so we often have a muscle on one side of a joint, a muscle on the other side of a joint, and the way these muscles balance one another is going, to, is going to determine the pull that is occurring or the force that occurs inside that joint. The most classic imbalance is where we have really tight structures on one side of a joint and then weakened, uh, underdeveloped muscles on the other side of a joint. That classic imbalance is what causes most of us to hurt, most of us to have pain in our knee or pain in our back or pain in our shoulder with our exercise. Okay. Often, it's impossible to strengthen weak muscles like the rotator cuff if we don't loosen the tight, overpowering muscles that often are the, the primary problem. You could heat before an activity. If you have chronic tendonitis, say, in your heel, in your Achilles, you could heat it, stretch it, cool it after the event. That's a strategy that would help you get through this. Or you could do massage. A lot of people will use foam rollers, massage tools, they'll get massage from a practitioner, or you can do something called dry needling. So the next page is really a definition of dry needling. It's an effective technique that uses a fine needle, an acupuncture needle actually, to deactivate or shut down painful or knotted areas of muscle. By using a fine needle into these tight areas, we can elicit what's called the twitch response, or a brief contraction and that's followed by an immediate and long-lasting relaxation. Much more profound than, say, just trigger point massage or ultrasound or electrical stimulation. Are there areas that they can't stretch, that they've been trying to stretch, but they just can't get that edge on this tight structure? That's the structure that we're going to needle. And then they're going to follow it up with stretching or maybe ultrasound or changing what they're doing with their with their workout routine because maybe that's bringing it on. If somebody was if somebody was going to come, you know, to me, they're looking to potentially enhance their performance. I'm going to utilize Chris as an example for triathlon. So I'm not looking per se for an injury to fix. Okay, I'm looking to enhance his performance. Okay. So if he presents with something that is a limiter, okay, an imbalance, and that would be done through you know uh, assessing him on the bike. So we put him on the compu trainer, and we see that he's you know pushing 60% with the right side, you know 40% with the left, okay. Then we can potentially you know do some diagnostics you know stuff where somebody's you know coming in with you know we can look at you know balance, we can look at the strength of the right you know versus the left. You know, we can we can put you know objective you know metrics you know to how much you know uh, range of motion you know how much you know strength his right and his left will have as well as you know visual you know if there's atrophy in an area so there might be you know some size difference there there might be some you know catabolism of an area there you know where hypertrophy in another 
So we would look at you know areas and things that potentially quote unquote didn't you know look right while I was trying to just measure heart rate, looking at you know measuring you know power. Well, I do an assessment. I look at movement. I look at strength. I do a, a, a screen and see are, can they can they squat all the way? Can they raise their arms up all the way? Can they turn their head all the way? You know, can they bend over and touch their toes? When they lie on their side, can they abduct their leg 20 times? I have people who are cyclists, who are avid fitness people, and I put them on their side because they say they have hip pain and I'm sort of keyed into that area, and they can't abduct their leg more than five times before they get tired. Well, there's something wrong in that hip. It's probably an imbalance. They might have a tight iliotibial band. They might have something wrong with their lower back. So it all starts with an assessment. People will come because they have pain, get over the painful episode, and say, okay, I'm ready to go back to the gym, now tell me what to do. Those of us who cycle a lot, I mean, I have issues with flexibility. Right. You know, in that muscle imbalance. Sure, sure. Yeah. I mean, no question about it. Okay, so come over here, let's just check your hip out. Let's just see if there's anything there you in your hip. <laughs> Which knee is it again? Okay, so sit on the treatment table there, just facing out there. Sure. Let's just look at and you push towards me like you're straightening and you go ahead push 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 do you do you hear the crack yeah okay come back down and do it again push 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 does this hurt you at all uh, first time was a little tender at the top of it okay so bend your okay, okay. so go ahead pull 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 so your hamstrings are weak so you got to be working on your hamstrings i, I haven't okay. done a lot Different. other than figuring out that your hamstrings are weak okay. clearly they're weak we still don't know why he's got this imbalance I, I don't know if it's ilio, iliotibial band or what let's bend this knee bring it back here so his iliotibial band is tight see how that pops back up it doesn't go down all right bring this leg up hold it there this leg should drop down to the floor down to the table see how it doesn't go down so his iliotibial band is tight. There it is, you feel that? Mm -hmm. That is the structure that's at fault. Okay. Now you can stretch that sucker yeah. until you're blue in the face. I could do it foam until roll it. foam roll, roll it. I'm telling you, needling that is more powerful. So your hamstrings are weak, yeah. your iliotibial band is tight. Okay. okay, there's the muscle imbalance. <clears throat> Keep doing the strengthening that you've been doing Get that iliotibial band looser. Roll it. Mm -hmm. If you're seeing a therapist, have them work it with the heel of their hand. But that's the kind of stuff that we do. So that's how we figure out what the problem is.